Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. So I'm actually at my home away from home at Armin Bayou Nature Center here in the heart of Houston. And we're actually on one of their main trails here and we're seeing a bunch of stuff. We're seeing beautiful frogs, water snakes. We got some night crowned herons up here making their nests as well as doing some breeding behavior. We saw a big female gator right over there. But what I'm talking to you guys about today is over the past two years, I have worked very closely with Armin Bayou to help redo their entire Texas exhibit showroom, as well as provide uh, brand new enclosures, help uh, establish standard operating procedures into their day to day to help streamline their process, and as well as get their animals to that high standard of care that they really want. And I'm gonna show you guys today what BioDude helped implement and what this amazing nonprofit has done here for our community and again guys if you haven't been to Armin Bayou Nature Center here in Houston make sure you come out show their show support to them because what they're doing here is for the for the community and for the animals is absolutely amazing let's get started you can see here all of the irises are in bloom this is hands down the best time of the year to get here we have uh, a breeding pair of night crowned, uh, night crowned herons up there. Uh, but it's, it's just amazing just to be around all these animals that are, that are thriving. So, bullfrogs, let's get to it. Okay, let's check it out. Okay. So, if you guys remember what it looks like before, now you guys can look at it now. So. Brief overview. I'm sure you guys recognize these cages here. These are, we were really happy to work with cages. It was Zach and Rose manufacturing these beautiful uh, cages right here. We have two of them. One of them is for a five line skink and some green anoles, while the other has green tree frogs, squirrel tree frogs, and gray tree frogs. Uh, you can see here just how vibrant and how well the animals are doing. I mean, just look at this big green frog over here. She is a big old female and she is ready. And we got a really beautiful gray tree frog right here, as well as a young gray tree frog underneath the leaves. Really awesome. And again, this how, how well that this room came together is just absolutely amazing. And everything is thriving, it looks so beautiful. Taking a look at this enclosure over here, it's amazing that this giant habitat is just for five, five line skinks and a couple green and brown moles. All right, this was one of my favorite builds. So this is a 75 gallon that, 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 I, that I put together. I am using a very powerful pump that does about 400 gallons per hour that is pumping into a, a canister filter that has mechanical, biological, and chemical filtration for this beautiful little mud turtle right here. You can see his, his, his little sensory nodules underneath his chin. And of course we have a multiple layers of driftwood in here, uh, as well as some mosquito fish. And what's really interesting is we're using the rocks uh, and providing him a basking spot for him to be able to get out. But this is just his enclosure. This Mississippi mud turtle, this is his home. And there is nothing else living in here with exception of the fish. And I can tell you that uh, we got them hooked up utilizing a carbon bottle, just like I showed you in, that, uh, in, the, in the video with my map turtles here at the Dude. But we absolutely love the little Mississippi map turtle. He's so cute and he is a pig, a little piggy. All right, now this enclosure we had to do a little bit differently. So we provided a 125 gallon. Now what, now because snapping turtles, they do not like water to be moving quickly at all. The water has to be fairly sedentary is the best way that I could describe it. So instead of utilizing a canister filter, we are utilizing two of the largest whisper filters. Now these filters do combined uh, probably about 90 to 100 gallons per hour. This is a 125, so this enclosure does have about 50 gallons of water in it. And you can see big old Bertha right here. Now I can tell you she has an attitude. It was a lot of fun uh, when Chris and I were first getting her moved over, getting her out. 
She definitely let us know that she didn't want to be touched. And she definitely let us know that this is her house and nobody else's. Being a snapping turtle, we wanted to make sure that she had plenty of coverage in her habitat, places that she can go under, while at the same time, she has the ability to extend her neck all the way out, exposing her nostrils out of the water so she can easily eat um, and get air. Uh, because when you're keeping snappers, you don't want the water to be too deep. But I can tell you, she is absolutely amazing, and Armin Bayou does such a great job at taking care of these. And then, as, of course, with the filters, I know that they are changing those filter pads every single month because she is dirty. All right, over here, this is for their baby alligators. So they are registered in Texas, uh, obviously being a nonprofit for alligator rehabilitation, uh, as well as the ability to work with other types of uh, entities in Texas, such as Brazos Bend State Park, to be able to uh, take in babies, raise them up, and, and put them back out into the wild, especially with alligators being a, key, a keystone species in many Texas ecological systems. But these little babies here were so much fun, and I had so much fun building this habitat. So again, this is a 125. I am using a, a, a pump that does 400 gallons per hour that is pumping the water out of the habitat into a big canister filter, just like the Mississippi mud that does chemical, mechanical, and biological filtration. And then after it passes through, the outtake is coming in there. But because alligators are so dirty, um, we weren't trying to have an insane amount of flow. If I was gonna use a larger filter, that water pressure coming out of the outtake would, would be making the water pretty you know, when we were looking at the marsh out there, the water's moving, but it's not rushing. If we would have put something much larger in here, we might, that might have been too much of a flow for the babies. So we are supplementing it with another whisper filter as well. Uh, this enclosure has about 45 gallons of water in it. And we are, of course, providing, like with all of the habitats here, they are getting heat, necessary UVB. As you can see, we got them hooked up with solar grows, with Arcadia lighting, as well as uh, really high-end halogen bulbs for that really high-quality infrared A and B. And I can tell you that these little gators absolutely love coming out here to bask. And it's real, what, when we designed this habitat, it was really important that their basking spot was extremely accessible. When they're little, they're not as nimble as per se adults are. So it's extremely important that we make their basking spot that they are able to get in and get out and that there's a space all around it so that way they don't get stuck. But I gotta tell you, we absolutely love baby alligators, alligators in general, and this habitat is doing good. It's nice to see that, that, that giant piece of Mopani, the two pieces of Mopani that I put in here, they have finally released all of their tannins, which is great. So there's not that heavy uh, tannin color in the water anymore. It did take me a lot of planning, you know, helping them plan these habitats, what supplies we were gonna need, and then of course, sourcing the aquariums. Sourcing the aquariums right now, especially during the corona time, was not easy. Glass was very hard to find. Now, one of my favorite Shalonians ever, uh, this is a 75 gallon, and this is a diamondback terrapin, a very fat diamondback terrapin. Now, these guys are, are endemic a lot to the Northeast and a lot of your brackish water. Uh, I would actually find these guys in Maryland rather frequently, but look at his little fat pockets. Oh my goodness. Um, so this, this, this habitat is running exactly the same as the Mississippi mud. It's a 75 gallon with roughly 40 gallons of water in it. We are using a very high pump that does about five. This pump is a little bigger than the Mississippi mud and the alligators. This pump does about 600 gallons per hour, and it is hooked up to a canister filter that does mechanical, biological, and chemical filtration. And then, of course, we have two different areas for us to get out of the water. Now, this is actually a recent acquisition. When I actually set these guys up, or when I actually set up this enclosure, it was for um, a smaller uh, Western painted turtle and a readier slider that were about this big. 
but since those animals have been rehabilitated uh, and put back where they need to be, either into the wild or into their long-term care facility. And now they're taking care of this guy. And honestly, Diamondback Terrapins, they're so beautiful. They are a really a one-of-a-kind turtle. They really are. They're extremely intelligent. And quite frankly, um, you can just tell by his body score, he's being taken care of really, really well. Um, and like all the other habitats, we are running Arcadia UVB, halogen lighting, uh, and making sure that we are providing the full spectrum of light. And you can even look at the outtake. Like you can see the water is moving a lot more aggressively in this enclosure than compared to like the Mississippi mud. And that was done for a reason um, with that larger pump. But yeah, absolutely love it. So over here, this is another commercial design that I worked very closely with Zach and Rose at cages.com. These are stackable, modular, as well as open from the side. So this was something that I was very, very proud of to be able to work with them and also be able to provide this to Armin Bayou after extensive talks with exactly what they wanted. So if you can see here, this is for a prairie king snake. Uh, this guy definitely has a little bit of an attitude uh, they do use this, this guy to, with a lot of their educational talks, birthday parties, things like that here at the Nature Center. Um, and of course, we, they have my Glow & Grow LED. They are offering an Arcadia 6% UVB, and we are offering a halogen spot bulb. Obviously, we are always using halogens with a nice deep layer of terra firma in here. Um, and of course, as you can, you notice a lot of these habitats are open. You know, very much like when you go to a zoo, we still want to make sure that we're providing a, a, an enriching, healthy habitat for our animals, right? But we also want the general public to be able to see them and gain as much of appreciation for them like we have. So, I mean, just look at this guy. He is absolutely fearless. We have an attitude, but for a prairie king snake, we're absolutely not taken back by the human pointing his finger at me. Down here, we have a speckled king snake. Now, uh, I actually provided this king snake to, uh, to, to these guys about eight months ago. He's a captive bred specimen, uh, and again, another Texas native, and you can actually see him back there resting. Just like the other habitats, we have a nice deep layer of terra firma with Arcadia 6%. A glow and grow LED bulb and a halogen heat bulb and you can see he's absolutely loving the spectrum right now but what I love even more is how well this neon green pofos is doing um, it is just looking it is it is taking over it is spreading and quite frankly it is just it looks great but he is comfortable enough to be out where everybody can see him which is I think is amazing so Next over here, I'm sure you guys remember these habitats, okay? Unfortunately, the large cottonmouth passed away um, about nine months ago. Uh, my wife actually did do a, a necropsy and it was determined that it was, it was older age uh, because she was over 20 years old. But since then, we were able to put the, the copperhead. Uh, he's down here in this habitat. Uh, and I can tell you the copperhead uses every single inch of it. So this, the, the firma that's in here has literally been around since the first time that I've ever been here. This Fatonia here in the corner, it started off this big. The arrowhead vine started off as a single stalk this big. And that Dracenia right there, the one that is stacked almost 24 inches tall, it started off as a plant this big. The Shephalera, the Peperomia, and the Dracenia, everything in here is thriving. Um, nice deep layer of terra firma mixed in, and of course we are doing lots of full spectrum lighting. So on each, so the one end, we do have, we now have thermostats built into every single thing, and we completely redid the wiring for all these habitats so that way they function better. So now every snake is not only hooked up to a thermostat, they also now are able to be provided full spectrum lighting, which is really important. So you can see here, I installed the Arcadia uh, light covers that allows us to utilize the Grow & Grow LED as well as the, uh, as well as the UVB. 
And, and we did that for the other side. And both of these habitats have very inquisitive Western rat snakes in them. Now you can see here that you can tell that these snakes are extremely active. They are always moving things around and they do like to climb. When I remember when I first did originally put this together, there was a lot more branching up top, but I can tell you it was definitely moved around. But you can also see the extensive amount of tunnels that they have through here and just how well they are adapting. And the amount of space that they have is so rejuvenating to see. It really is. Um, it, is just, it is just a really, really great thing. So I also wanna take you to behind here. So this was another thing that I worked with cages to, to design. We needed a much better way to access the venomous animals in a safe way to make sure the employees are safe, but also to do it ethically so that way the animals that are in here, they can see out this way, but they can't see out this way. So this is the double, this is both of the doors for the rattle, uh, excuse me, for the copperhead. We now have them labeled. And what's really nice is not only are they locked, but these just slide in and out. So when we are ready to, to, to take care of these animals, we, untake, we take the lock off, this slides off, and then there is another door that's behind this one that we can then open. But this entire wall, Zach and Rose did such a good job helping us implement this. Okay. Now, not my favorite, but it's, it's, it's up there colony of Gulf Coast toads. I mean, come on. Look at these guys. They are so cute. So uh, this was another habitat. I like all the other habitats that we provided here. There are six of these little blobs of joy living in this habitat. We have a nice deep layer of terra firma in here. We designed and built this custom tank lid here, as well as provided these nice stands here for this exoterra. Now this custom lid here is really nice because it allows us to put all of our heating and hardware. So that way the general public doesn't touch hot heat bulbs uh, or anything like that. Just one more thing to help tie the room together as the Lebowski would say, but also make sure that they are covered in the way of making sure that people can enjoy the animals without that level of liability. Then we have the aquatic wall. So, this wall was so much fun to build. Like I said, I got them set up with a carbon bottle, but I supplied them all new 20 gallon high tanks, got all the filtration set up, got all the tanks cycled, and got all the aquariums and stuff set up. So the first thing they have, and these are captive bred albino checkered garter snakes. Now, if you've ever kept garter snakes before, the one thing, the one thing you know is they are very intelligent and inquisitive snakes. They eat lots of different things, and they are not afraid to be out and in your face, which makes them such an amazing display species to have on here. Just like the other animals, we are able to provide full spectrum lighting. So we are offering a halogen heat bulb. Uh, we are offering them a milder UVB, right in the Ferguson zone of a, a little bit under one, as well as a glow and grow LED with a nice little bit of, uh, I did a, a terra firma and terra flora mix actually for these guys, as you can cl clearly see the mixes of charcoal in with the soil with the terra firma base. And I did that because these guys like to have those humidity spikes throughout the day, um, but the substrate wasn't gonna be super deep. So it just helped us, uh, helped us maintain that a little bit more. Down here, we have another critter happily provided by the bio dude. This is a Texas brown tarantula, and you can actually see him here resting right on top of the, of the Mopani rootwood. Now this is a 20 gallon high on terra firma. Now these, now these tarantulas are endemic here all over Texas. You can find them fairly commonly, but they definitely wanted a, a really cool invertebrate in here, and I, you really can't go wrong with these guys. And then we have the giant millipedes, the Texas Golds. Um, I believe they have four of them in here. I, this rabbit's foot fern, when I put it in here, it was this big, super, super, super tiny. Now look at it. You can see all the trails and stuff coming out. And we have a neon green pothos established and you can actually see a millipede right over there in the corner. He's all bundled up here. You can see here that we offer, they offer them gel water crystals so they can stay hydrated as well as a cuddle bone and then a slice of carrot. 
pretty straightforward. Lots of biodegradables, lots of different types of wood options to eat. Deep substrate with, with water gel crystals and they, are, they will thrive for you. Here is a 20 gallon high habitat that we set up for a Texas bluegill. You guys know the bluegills. I have some of them in my Razorback Must Turtle habitat that I shared with you recently. This is a big boy right here. Now he eats crickets. He eats pretty much everything that you give him. I know that it is their plan to potentially release him back into the wild because he is accustomed to eating a lot of the wild foods. But in here, we have a whisper filter with a glow and grow LED. We have uh, assorted different types of stone that I have brought as well as ghost wood put in here. And you can see how well that's looking. When we, and I have fluval stratum here as the base. Over here in this 20 gallon high, we have the exact same setup with mosquito fish and snails. This was one of my favorite builds here because of the rock. So I, did, I went a lot more rock heavy with this. Uh, especially with this big centralized one here going across the base. Mosquito fish are really cool because they, they are found in puddles that, and they just kind of show up. Don't know where they come from, but literally you'll find a little shallow puddle in the woods and there will be fish living in it with no adjoining water. And it's like, how did they get there? But here they are, the mosquito fish. And last but not least, we have some mosquito fish down here with a Texas crawfish. Now, as you can see here, the, the piece of ghost wood has actually this really, really neat algae growing on it. And honestly, I think it adds a lot of character to this habitat. Same exact loadout, we're using a whisper filter, fluval substratum with bone stone and thousand layer rock and, and my ghost wood. We did jumpstart all of these habitats using a uh, bait fish. And then we used uh, some of the Fritz's turbo start. We kept the bait fish in here for a couple days. And then after we felt the tank had a little bit more time to establish, we were really happy then to provide uh, the final habitats in here to help finish up the cycle of the habitat. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this short tour of Armin Bayou Nature Center. Make sure if you're in Texas or visiting, check these guys out. They do amazing work. I'm so humbled and proud to be able to work with them and to show you just some of the accomplishments we've gotten done here at the BioDude these last couple months and just the amount of work that both parties have put in. It truly is rewarding. Again, my name's Josh Halter. I'm the owner and founder of the BioDude. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. Hit that like and subscribe button. Find me on social media. Make sure you come visit Armin Bayou. Do the bides. See him right there? He's, he's, he's coming up front here. Here he comes. He's coming right at us. <laughs>